good morning, beautiful morning, bank holiday, Monday morning. Of course, every day is bank holiday these days. And you are welcome to Coffee at 11 with my good friend, Liam Burke, and my very special guest this morning. Liam, you're more than welcome. Good to see you. Can you say hi, Liam? Good morning, Colin, um, th- and thank you for having me. Uh, and, and, and an absolute pleasure, Liam. Let me tell you uh, just a little bit about Liam before we let him come in and tell you in his own words. Uh, Liam Burke, his business name is Liam Burke's Ireland. He provides bespoke private guided tours of Ireland. Employees, just myself. And then he says, after nine years of the leading luxury touring company, Liam decided to set up on his own in 2017. From a slow start, not knowing where the next loaf of bread would come from, he had to work really hard on social media to get his clients, mostly from the USA. And based on the social media interaction last night, Liam, when we went live with the fact that you were coming on, huge fan base. Uh, out there in the USA for your good self. So looking forward, looking forward to that. Uh, something nobody knows about you. Behind it all, he says, I can be quite shy, but learn to realize that a quiet priest never got a parish. <laughs> so I had to work really hard on that. Liam Burke, you're more than welcome to Coffee at 11. Please tell us, give us the backstory behind Liam Burke, the legend. Good morning, Colin. Uh, I grew up on a farm in Clancy Limerick, halfway between Limerick and Tipperary, where we had cows and um, and we had our own, uh, we were self-sufficient, as in, in the garden, we sold you know, the excess produce. Um, so I didn't know I had an interest in, in animals, um, you know, helping on the farm. Uh, we had, a, as you can see in one of the, the profile picture, I had, we had a donkey. Yes, we used a donkey on a Sunday. There was um, a donkey derbies, you know, and when this, this, the parish would have this, this sports day, the, the highlight of the day would be the donkey derby. Um, so th- that's how my interest in racing and and, and heart ponies became, uh, to see who had the fastest path, really. So that uh, we uh, and we also had the donkey because the, back then there was a, a kind of a, like a plague among cattle where uh, they get red water it was a disease, but donkeys would cure. And you'll, to this day, you will still see farmers keeping donkey with a herd of cattle. And um, when I was a young kid, then my dad bought me a pony, and I learned to ride a pony bareback. Uh, from there, we've got a saddle, and then, of course, I sneak days off to go in the local hunting in the area, and I go fox hunting. And that's how I really toned in my skills in riding. Uh, I went to local school, national school, and then I'm to doing CBS. But back then, Colm, it was norm for a kid to leave school after your intercert uh, to follow a trade. Some guys were to be plumbers, and some guys went with their dads to be farmers or whatever. I just always had the longing to be a jockey. I was small, I was light, and um, I was only, only weighed five stone, 10 pounds dressed. And I begged my dad to, I want to be a, a jockey dad. So I got a, uh, my, uh, to pull, I got a, my apprenticeship with Dermot Well, who was the leading trainer in Ireland. Um, and I spent five years with Dermot as an apprentice jockey and had great success with him, riding on the flat, and when I started, I'd say it was five stone ten. When I was sixteen, I was able to ride six stone ten in colours, boots, silks. Seventeen, I was able to do seven stone ten. And at eighteen, I still could do seven stone ten. But then I started to grow and fill up. And then I started riding over jumps. Great success uh, during my five years. Um, and my Dermot, when my apprenticeship came up, asked me would I go to England and be a jump jockey. But the calling for America, some of my friends had left for the States, and the calling was to go to America to gallop horses on the racetracks in America. The money was huge, and the lifestyle was good. So after five years on the Cura, I decided to go to America for three and a half years, spending the winters in Florida, the summers in New York, the month of August upstate New York, galloping the racehorses. And it was an easy job because it was only from 6 in the morning to 9.30 in the morning, finished for the day. So I became a beach boy. Uh, great, great years. When I came back in, uh, after three and a half years, we had sold the farm and we had bought a kind of a hardware store and grocery store just inside Limerick City. And my parents were getting out elderly. The business was doing well and asked me when I come home. And I saw the opportunity column. All the newspapers we had been dumping every day, the ones that were not sold. And all the news agents had the same problem, dumping their newspapers. And in the States, we bedded our good horses, the best horses, on newspaper because it was sterile. It was just free. And I came up with the idea, why don't I build a little factory, charge the people to take their waste newspaper, 
shred it, bale it, and sell it to horses. But by God, did I, was I surprised. Not alone was horses buying it, but the, my local dairy farmers were using it under their, their, their dairy cows because they had a lower bacteria count for their milk and they got a bigger price. And plus, it de when it went into the slurry tank, it decomposed faster than using anything else. So it was a huge success, and I had five great years shredding paper. The business was called AgriBed. And it became such a success, I was taking all the paper out of Dublin. I was charging to take away the paper. And at that time, I was getting 120 pounds a ton for the my bales of paper. And it all changed after five great years. They put the price of paper. One company decided um, they wanted the paper. So instead of me charging them, they were giving 60 pounds a ton. I knew I was at nothing. And I had worked so hard for five years, built a lovely, built the factory myself, so I had no rent to pay. I had the factory paid for, I had the machinery paid for, and I sold it. I sold the, the building, I sold the machines, and I was left in two trucks. A, a big company called CNC, Cantor and Corker, at the time were looking for owner drivers to do some distribution to them. And I set it off with one truck, and, and it became such a success that within a space of 18 months, they had me doing every pub from Limerick to Ackle Island. There was 1,700 pubs on a next day delivery service. Uh, I had 25 staff with me. It was great. But in 2006, during the height of the boom, it was hard to get really good drivers. Um, and the phone had gone out of the recall. So I said, what am I going to do? I, the, I just wasn't enjoying it. So great company, but eventually I, I pulled the plug on it. And I had nothing to do with that for that summer. And a friend of mine said to me, Liam, is there any chance I'm really stuck? Will you, will you drive a tour bus? I mean, I said, of course, nothing else to do. And it was for Rick Steves. He's a very famous travel writer. Um, and the guides on board were just awesome, the best in the, the business. And of course, I spent all my time with them, listening to them, watching how they performed, picking their, the best parts of their, what, they, what I thought was, was awesome. And within the end of that year, I got a phone call from a major luxury touring company in Dublin, asked me would I come and work for them. That was amazing. And so now I'm in the Premier League column, you know, dealing with the high-end clients in a chauffeur-driven car. Uh, it was nerve-wracking. It was a bit like this morning, column, a little bit nerve-wracking. Well, you're, you're, there's no need for you to be, for your nerves to be racked with us, with us, Liam. That's quite an amazing journey so i've just tracked it from pony and cart basically all the way through to high-end luxury uh, tours am i right in saying that yes colin you're 100 percent. and and at what point then did you decide to go out on your own and start lean burks ireland from 2007 colin i've noticed that it, the, the business was increasing year on year and the demand for my services was increasing. I was getting very little time off myself. I didn't own myself, Callum. I was a number in the, I was the number. And so I knew that if I went out my own column, I could dictate when I was ha ha taking time off and when I could, you know, go away in, on vacation. And so it was always my intention to, to do it, but the leap was what I needed. I needed to make that decision. And I made a decision in 2017. And I put up one photograph on Facebook to say, after nine years silver service, I've decided to go on my own. And really, the rest is history. It's uh, fascinating. And I've, I've been part of your journey, party to your journey, I suppose, somewhat looking in from the outside. And uh, the fact that your diary fills up, uh, at, you know, in, indeed, before the year begins for the following year is incredible. All down to, uh, to your motto. Tell us about your motto, please, Liam. Um, my motto is very simple, and so it, it's a TNT. It's tiny, noticeable things. And that's what makes me stand out from, I think, the crowd. You have to, um, it's like this morning column. Uh, I say to guys, what does it cost you to put on a tie in the morning? Nothing. But it's tiny, noticeable things. That is my brand column. It is your brand, and I was going to comment on the tie because just before we started the show, you had shared that with me, that in fact, you got up and this is your brand, so you put on the tie. You also shared the fact that you've often climbed Croke Patrick with your, with your guests. 
uh, with your, your visitors and you've never taken the tie off. That's amazing. Yeah, correct, Colin, uh, because the industry is a very small industry um, and it is my standard. And I went up the 2,550 feet in my suit and tie and my dress shoes. Um, that's me. And I will never be caught with my guard down. That's, that's my standard, Colin. That's, that's me. That, uh, that is simply attention to detail par excellence. And it's exactly why uh, people come. Well, it's one of the reasons why people come back all, uh, time and time and again to, to, visit, uh, to visit Ireland through your, your uh, amazing eyes. You, you've obviously, you must know every corner of the country at this stage, do you? Well, you see, Colin, I, as you say, it, when I left, when I started driving for the, 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 the touring, luxury touring company, I was turning at the deep end. And I had to work harder than anybody else because well, you could say I was self-taught. So it meant that at night when I finished my day's tour, I would ask the locals, what's in this area? What can I see? So every night I would get on my, my hiking boots, whether it was a, there's no mountain, there's no hill in Ireland that I had not climbed to find stuff until 10 and 11 o'clock at night. There's nowhere that I would have not gone to meet somebody to find, to to make to build up my 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 library for the next the next tour, and I've been doing that for years upon years upon years, Colin. And of course, you were doing that when you were working for somebody else. I was really really intrigued uh, a couple of times in in your you know when you were bringing us through the early years. You, you said a couple of things that were very telling. Uh, you said you didn't own yourself. You said that uh, you you studied the way the, the the best players in your industry performed. So there are, there are little breadcrumbs there for any of us listening as to what makes uh, a really good business brand and a really good business person. So you were looking and be benchmarking yourself against the best as you saw them. Uh, you then realized that by working for the man, uh, you would never uh, be your own man. And uh, that gave you the, the, uh, the, the, the kick, if you like, to step out and do it for yourself. Were you surprised at... Um, what, well, let me ask the question slightly differently. Was it easy for your business to grow in those early years or was it difficult? Oh, very difficult, Colin. Absolutely. Because I was starting with uh, uh, nothing, really. And I didn't know, Colin, where the next loaf of bread, did I make a big mistake? You, where, where was? So I had to work really hard on social media every night when I came in. I reported where I was, you know, on something that nobody else would have seen. And that's what built up my, my following on Facebook. And you could see the, the, the views, the shares, the hits were getting bigger. The inquiries were uh, keep coming. Um, but it took, Colin, you see, there's lots of people have to thank for this. This would not have happened without, and I just want to mention, the, I, I met by accident one, uh, Eamon, Eamon uh, Smith, he's a life coach. He was cutting my hair one day. And he was doing his degree and he wanted to practice in some way. And, Eamon was the man that was able to show me my flaws and you need to work on this link without, without Eamon. And then I happened to meet you and I followed, I watched every one of your YouTubes on the dark days to see, I could see what you've done, Colin. And I said, well, I can replicate what Colin O'Brien can do. And then I happened to meet Dave Sheehan, another guy who educates, motivates and inspires. You had him on that. He's just an amazing guy. Um, and then there was Evelyn, who's a life coach and an author. And they gave me the motivation all the time to continue, 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 continue. And they've helped me build the brand. I didn't do it on my own, Colin. It was with the help of you guys. And you are the unsung heroes of the, of the business industry. Well, if I may, on behalf of uh, some of the others who are also on the, on the call here this morning, uh, it's been our pleasure to be, uh, play a small part in your journey. I think the most interesting thing from my perspective is not knowing, you know, you and I did meet and we met at Eamon Smith's first ever live event as it happens. But, you know, had we not met you and I, I'd never have known that my work that I was doing on a regular basis was having an impact. So it's really lovely to hear uh, from all sorts of corners that it comes back, uh, that what, what we do makes a difference. We don't do it to, we do it to make a difference, but we don't do it specifically to pick on somebody and say, right, I'm going to make a difference in your life because that's not, we're not in charge of that. We are in charge of being who we are and putting it out there for whomever to, to, to benefit from. Uh, and uh, Eamon has said, it was all you, Liam. I merely, merely facilitated you seeing you. Uh, Eamon has also agreed to come on the show. Uh, with a date yet to be announced, so uh, that'll, that'll be out in a while. So, Liam, it started off with some difficulty. 
and uh, you had to work really hard. Clearly, you're a very hard worker. Clearly, you're a very hard worker from early morning to late at night to, to get better and better and better at your craft. And in those early days, it was you, I presume, doing a tour and then, as you say, going talking to the locals and then putting up a report on social media and you built up your brand thereafter. And then at one point in recent years, it was absolutely flying and you were booked out uh, as much as you wanted to work because you, 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 you wanted to be in charge of your own time. So everything appears to have been going swimming you then for a while. And then COVID hit. And you told me recently when we were chatting about uh, the, the, the day Trump closed uh, the, the, uh, the borders and how you felt. Would you like to touch on that for a second, please? Colin, the only way I could describe it to you, Colin, it was like a death in the family. It was the death of my business. And it happened in a space of um, when President Trump announced, you know, he was closing Europe. Um, I grieved. I, um, I watched TV. I was watching BBC News, what was happening. I was watching CNN, what was happening in the States, watching RT. And I grieved and cried because my business was gone. That I'd worked so hard for. Um, I just couldn't believe it. And then I said, I have to get over this and I have to stop watching TV and I have to get on my life. And I said, well, I need to start right now. So I had to make changes to my life. And what did I say? I'm, okay. So I took up cycling. Never, I was never, never cycling. I got a, a, a second hand bike and I'm on the roads and I'm cycling. I'm doing more gardening. And um, I'm doing Pilates, Colin. I'm doing Pilates with CGB physio. They're on Facebook. It's free every Thursday night, seven o'clock. And I'm now doing Pilates, which I never did before. Uh, and Quiva, the, the physio, she's fantastic. And so I'm inviting everybody here that's watching this to tune in to CGB Physio on Facebook Live. Uh, so I've changed. And now what I'm doing, Callum, remember, we may never see another pandemic. And I don't want in two months' time to say to myself, oh, I should have done Pilates and I should have done a bit of stuff. I'm doing it all now and I'm actually enjoying what I'm doing, Colin, because I may, never, I may never see another one of these pandemics. So I would have no regrets when we come out of this in a month or six weeks' time, knowing that I have done everything that I set out to achieve to do. Does that answer your question, Colin? It, it more than answers my question, uh, Lee, more than. Um, <clears throat> First thing that struck me, um, and I think it struck everybody here this morning, is you grieving the death of your business. That's a very real feeling, very real feeling. And there are a lot of people out there who are going through the process of grieving the loss of their job, perhaps, or the loss of their business, or the, the fear around will their business resuscitate after COVID. So I think that's very honest of you to admit that. Uh, and you admitted to crying, and you admitted to you know three or four days sitting in front of the television, um, basically mourning in morning and um, and then at one point you decided okay enough I gotta step up and um, I gotta step up and do something different and I found it really interesting that you decided to embrace the pandemic uh, you said we may never see another one and I was I was doing this to the camera because please God we will never see another pandemic in our lifetime um, but you also suggested when we, we had a chat the other day that uh, and you're, you're, you're doing this at the moment, you're putting this into action, but you're planning to enjoy this pandemic, if there's such a phrase, in that you've taken up cycling, you've taken up more gardening, uh, you're doing Pilates. I'm looking forward to the Pilates with Lean series, and I'm series. Every, everybody in their ties, their shirt and ties. Right? <laughs> but, you know, what, wilder things have happened. Wilder things have happened. So, you know, I just think you're, you're a great guy who, who um, life has attempted to, to put you down at times and each time uh, you've risen once again um, and uh, of course the time of the year that we're, that we're, that we're at, at Easter time, perfect analogy. So, um, so it's just, it's, it's lovely to hear your honesty, Lee. I think it's really important. Um, I, I love the fact that you mourned your business. I love the fact that you uh, came out of that and I love the fact that you're learning new skills. That's just fantastic and you're encouraging us all to do the same. Liam, tell us about your view of the world because the, the veil will lift. What would you like to happen for Liam Burke's Ireland when the veil lifts? What do you think is going to happen? How long will it take? God only knows how long is a piece of string, Colin. 
But what I'm doing at the moment, how am I dealing with it at the moment, is yes, as the cancellations now come through, I'm reselling the same uh, trip. Don't uh, take the cancellation and say, no problem, but why don't we book the same holiday for this time next year? What about coming in November? What about coming in December? What about coming in January? And what about, you know, you can come in December and sit down by a real turf fire, you know, we we'll, we we'll tour from nine o'clock in the morning and I'll have you back in your hotel at four o'clock in the evening, sitting down by a real turf fire and a pint of Guinness. You mean, how could you beat that, Colin? Yeah, you, like Christmas in Killarney is fantastic, Colin. You know, the, the, the every weekend they have parades. And so no better place to spend uh, time in November. The people are still here, Colin. You must remember, People don't just come for the scenery, they come for the people. The people are still here. They love, the Americans just love to meet the genuine, honest to good and down to earth Irish people because of our friendliness. One tip I'm going to give you, Callum, um, it's, it's a t- one of my tips when I'm driving. I'm driving down a little country road uh, in the summertime, maybe doing 35, 40 kilometers, they're looking out the window and there's people walking and I'll always put up my hand and wave. And what normally happens, everybody waves back. Now, the people in the back of the car don't see me waving, right? And they automatically assume every time I'm passing, everybody's waving at them. And they, so it comes across that Ireland is such a friendly country. Simple thing, costs nothing, little wave. And I, I would love everybody, when they come out of pandemic, when we're driving down the roads, give everybody a wave, costs nothing. I'm, I'm laughing here, I'm laughing. Tiny noticeable things, TNT, and there's Liam waving out the front of the, the, uh, the, the van, and, uh, and all these uh, lovely Irish people waving at the American tourists, it's fantastic. Uh, you mentioned American tourists a lot. Uh, is a lot of your business coming from the States? Yes, Colin, and I was a, extremely fortunate um, in, in, the last, in the last 18 months it, in getting two uh, travel specialists on board of me, they've heard about me, and they're using my services. And one of them is, is all travel guru, and those, uh, Lindsay and, and her, her staff, about 16 girls, and they're firing work at me from all over, you know, from, from the States. Yeah, but all travel guru just doing to Ireland, but it's very, is one of their top destinations, and they've sent people to the South Pole. And I have another lady uh, who specializes in equestrian tours, Ireland equestrian tours. Um, so you can go trekking along the wild Atlantic way or you can, you know, the, the North Antrim coastline. And she sends me a lot of work, equestrian, you know. So I'm really lucky in that end. And I have another girl from Irish Manor Stables who comes to Ireland to buy her horses, you know, the event horses. And they come in, in November, December. So long term, the future looks very bright, Colin. You must remember, Colin. I don't grief myself. There's 275,000 people in the tourist industry. And I grieve for those girls and, and boys working in the hotels who are serving my meals. I really feel for those people. And I don't feel it. They're the people that I really feel sorry for. Uh, those foreign girls over here, maybe they cannot get social welfare. Um, great people. And that's where my heart uh, goes out to today. And you have a big heart, Liam Burke. Uh, it's, it's very obvious to us all. Um, and, and beautifully said, by the way, that you're grieving for the 275,000 people involved in hospitality who uh, are currently out of work. I think one of the things that you've given me some hope around, Liam, is the fact that you have very clearly demonstrated what we all know to be true. This will lift this time next year, please God. We'll have celebrated Easter out in the open and together again. So, uh, you know, Ireland will always be here. The people will always be here. The beautiful scenery will always be here. So all we've got to do is wait this out. And uh, as long as we get through it alive and well, uh, all will yes. be well. Uh, Liam, I loved, just touching on something you said there, I loved the fact that uh, somebody naturally needs to cancel their, their trip. That's very obvious, right? It's very natural. Uh, but rather than you just accepting it and saying, okay, yeah, sorry for that, you, you're repackaging, you know, a summer trip has become a Christmas and Killarney trip and uh, you've sold the sizzle, uh, lovely uh, tour around the lakes and then I'll have you back at your uh, your hotel drinking a pint of Guinness in front of a real turf fire by six o'clock or four o'clock or whatever. Pure magic, in fairness. The other thing that struck me was because of your equestrian background, uh, I imagine you've got a knowledge base that most other tour operators would envy. Do you think that's a, that's a feather in your cap? 
Hey, Colin, I have a passion for every industry. You know, it's not just, yes, I, I, I love the equestrian industry, but you must also remember, Colin, I have a passion for every industry. But look at the product we have here in Ireland, hey, Colin. We have some of the top hotels in the world. Right at my doorstep, we have the Dare Manor, we have Ashford Castle, we have Dromore and Castle. We have, we, have, we have the product, Colin. It's easy to sell it. Um, we have megalithic tombs, Colin, all than the pyramids. We have so much stuff here, Colin. It, 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 that's not gone away. So we have we have the property, and it's only a matter of time before it's back up and running again. Remember, Colin, when we had the, cra the crash in 2008, the, the tourist industry only, only went one way. It kept on going up and up and up. So it will come back. There's no question, Colin. I'm sold. I'm in. <laughs> Where are we going, Liam? Where are we going? Um, Jared White came on this morning, and she's uh, put a little note in here. She says, this entire interview is amazing. Thank you, Liam and Colm. Ha, ha, ha. Very clever. And the people are still here. Uh, so, Jerry, you're very welcome. Well, uh, welcome to Coffee at 11. Liam Burke, we're going to go to Q&A from the floor in just a moment. Fascinating having a chat with you. And thank you for uh, taking the time this morning to do so. Um, before we do, one tip. What one tip would you give to us all, for to your nearest and dearest, in terms of us coping with COVID and coming out the far end in, in good health and in good shape? What, what one thing? Please, Liam. As I said, maybe I mentioned it already, you know, you enjoy the time and do things that you don't regret in two months' time or six weeks' time when we're out of this in the middle of May, that we didn't do what we all oh, could have done. My the gardens, I could have done the such. Now's the time to learn. I'm now spending time researching, learning. I, my day is full. You know, I get up in the morning and listen to Evan McAleer morning gratitude. I have coffee with Colin at 11. My day is packed, Colin. I do my cycling, my gardening, and this is my elderly mother. My day is packed. I'm really enjoying it, Colin. Well said. Well said. Uh, you basically make the most of this pandem pandemic. We're not going to see another one. Evelyn McAleer would like to uh, say hi and ask a question. Evelyn, you're live. I'm live. Are you ready for this, Liam? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's more, I absolutely have loved listening to you. There's a lot that I didn't know that you've shared on here today. Well done. It's beautiful. But there was a video that um, you had shared, and I thought was one of the most special ones uh, that you put up, was when a family came over from America to search for their ancestors. And you brought them, you found, you went beyond the call of duty and help them trace and find back the old homestead, you know, of their their past, their family members, you know. And I, it was such a very touching and emotional video. And I said, there's the man, you see. And what you have, Liam, it's not about even selling. You have an absolute passion and love for this country. And uh, that's where you excel. I, I see love and just complete passion for everything that you do and for the people that you work with. And uh, as we spoke about Dharma the other night, that's your uniqueness. And that's the unique need every time. And I'm delighted that you're getting your time because I know you're a very, very busy man and you're learning all extra things now. And uh, yeah, so do you find, my question is, do you find that you have a lot of people now that are reaching out to you to help them to find um, ancestral homesteads about now? Evelyn, that was just, I had two, I just love, it's like looking for a lottery ticket, you must remember, when you're looking for these um, last relatives. And that one in particular, all they had was a photograph of their cottage, sorry, not a photograph, a, a painting of their cottage taken many, many years ago on the Bear Peninsula. And I put it up on social media, I need to find this cottage. And on that morning, it, it was on for a couple of days, and on that morning, I got a phone call, we found the cottage. You think there was tears in their eyes? You should see my eyes. To see them, see the cottage that their grandmother had left in 1908, still in the same condition, no, since the, day, the morning that they left. That was one of the most amazing. And I had another one with a lady that um, up in oh, Belly James stuff. And I happened to just, we were given up hope. And I took the grass off of this um, stone that was lying on the ground. And there was her grandfather. And she cried, and I, I couldn't help but I cried myself. But we, thinking that that was all done, we went down to the local pub for lunch. And I said to the, the publican, I said, is there any morals left in the area? And he says, there is actually. There's a 93-year-old man across the road 
Mr. Morrow. I said, is there any chance you can go over and ask him, can we just go over and say hello to him? You won't believe it, Evelyn. Wasn't the old man was this lady's third cousin. That he was 92 years of age. The tears rolled down her eyes and rolled down mine. It was just the most amazing thing to see. And that for me is like, I, I just get such a kick of it. It's not the money I do as far as do it because it's passion. And everybody I've spoken to, from you to all the rest of the people that comes, it's passion. The money will come later. Absolutely. And that's what shines from you see. And that's your Mr. Manifesto. Effortless. Yeah. Wonderful name. Good man. Thank you, Evelyn. Okay, you're live. Thanks, Tom. Liam, good morning, sir. Good morning, Eamon. Lovely to see you again. And um, can I just say, yeah, like Evelyn, I hear one or two aspects of your story that I hadn't heard before. I just before I get to my question, your your story. Do you know what? I I just really touched and thank you for your vulnerability. That's where your power is. People make the mistake that vulnerability is weakness. It isn't. I'm very inspired listening to you. Um, it was an absolute joy doing that bit of work we did together a few years ago and to see where you are now and to see like your mindset and come from your heart it's just it's a joy and I, I take tremendous personal kind of glee in, 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 in watching you become who you are in spite of everything and it's very inspiring listen to you that you kind of fell down as we probably all did with COVID and, and how you responded it's not about the storm it's about how you respond to the storm and I think what, what, what you're doing and what you're saying is amazing and Evelyn, of course, used my magic word again, Dharma. And you're a, such an example of you act and you behave and you think in such a way that's in accord with Dharma. You, you, you're for the benefit of other people and it's selfless and it's, it's just, it's, it's magical. And thank you for sharing and thank you for, for what you are. My question, Liam, is in the world that we're all living in now, we, I mean, we've never been more connected than we are now because we're all in the same chapter, right? And it's a challenge. Could you share something? I know you said about how busy you keep yourself during the day, but in the moments when you're just alone with you, when there's just Liam with Liam, what do you do for you that grounds you, that brings you into that kind of, you know, connected, all is well, this moment is good? Well, can you share something that you do that's just for Liam? Before I answer that question for you, uh, Eamon, I just want to let you know that you're an unsung hero in the, in the every business should use uh, a life coach, I don't care. Because you were able to point out to me, and I remember one time you did a kind of a circle, and you were able to show me my weaknesses. And the way I had a different, it was like a puncher in a tire of a bike. I knew exactly where you pointed out the puncher, and I needed to repair that puncher. You were the man that pointed out where my weaknesses were. You saw were. it. <laughs> oh, I saw that. Yeah, I, eventually, it took a while. The penny did drop on me. And that was where you were, uh, um, you were an unsung hero. And I think every Bless business you, you, should use... Um, a professional. If I had my way, every person on the planet would have a coach. Coaches need coaches. Supporters need support. Everybody should have a coach. I, you know, yeah. I'm sure it is a word to just drop, like a, like a, like toxic. But you know what I'm yeah. saying. Everybody uh, an avail of coaching to some degree. Yeah. Yeah. I love Evelyn's morning motivate uh, morning uh, gratitude. That for me is first thing in the morning and uh, with my cup of coffee. I then meet, uh, as they have column, uh, coffee with Colm, and I enjoyed your interview the other day. You were just an inspiration. Um, and then I, I spend as much, I turn off the TV, and I don't want to listen to any negative news. I spend as much time outdoors as possible and doing good, you know, from helping my 86-year-old mother, uh, maybe the shop, you know, giving her a hand in the garden. Doing something, uh, so uh, my day is really full, Eamon. But I still go back to saying thank you, Eamon, very, very much for what you have done for, for me and for everybody else. Thank my you. My pleasure. Thank you, Liam. It was a joy. Great question, Eamon, and I love your Liam. Thank you, Sarah Ward. You're Hi, how you doing, Liam? Good morning, Sarah. I have goosebumps here listening to your your stories. Um, it's fantastic what you've done and what you've achieved and uh, fair juice to you and finding those ancestors, my God, that must have been some moment, you know. Um, uh, what my question was is, or what my question is, is you've done a lot of Irish tours. Which is the most popular tour? Uh, Sarah, there's no, that is the difference. There is no uh, popular tour. When I speak to people, I, I ask them, uh, you're giving me a blank sheet of paper and you want me to paint a picture for you of Ireland. So no two tour, no week is the same. Every tour is different because you hand me a blank piece of paper 
and you want me to paint you a picture of Ireland. I will paint a picture that you want. So I find out from you, I ask you lots of questions. Why are you coming here? What is this? What are your interests? What is your mental picture of Ireland that you see? So eventually, I get your picture, and then I will build a tour around your... Um, your Perfect. Yeah. So you basically give the people what they want, to, and, and, and that makes them really happy. Yeah, that's fabulous. Yeah, so... There's, yeah, no tour, no week is the same for me. Every week is different. You must remember there's 32 countries nice. so it is, and everybody's different. Fabulous, fabulous. Well done. Lovely, lovely. Very perceptive question there, Sarah, and another beautiful response, Liam. Um, I'm reminded of uh, Evelyn and her dharma uh, and, and the fact that there is no competition with dharma. There is no competition. Liam Burke is absolutely unique. There are lots of tour operators out there, and then there's Liam Burke. And uh, that's why people keep going back to Lean Burke because you set your standard, you are who you are, you don't compete, you just, uh, you serve, serve, don't sell. Uh, I see there's a, Kira Lucy is the name on the phone, but this is definitely not Kira Lucy. So uh, with this handsome man with the beard, please explain why he's called Kira. Um, I, hi everybody, I just, uh... I just came on this morning because uh, I was chatting to Liam and he invited me last night and I, I see everybody's looking dressed up and stuff and I just in after a run so that's why I was li uh, lying on the bed and stuff but and it's my girlfriend's phone Kira Lucy but um, so I just said uh, I think this is a motivation group or I'm not sure but I just wanted to say a few things about Liam you know um, you know he doesn't give himself uh, enough credit in a, in a lot of ways because you know I am um, start working with that luxury company um uh about four or five years ago and um Liam I met him on the maybe the the third, fourth or fifth day. I met Kevin, his brother was on the chat was first and then I met Liam and Liam really is uh, top class. But not only that was, you know, he, he he I just met him on the side of the road outside Limerick. Uh, we swapped buses. Never met him before. He sat me down and and gave me all the tips of of how he operates uh you know he sits the clients down most people you know they meet them in the airport or the hotel hop into the car down the road you know liam said you sit down with the customer you you chat with them you find out what they want what they're interested what their vision is and uh you know he's just a, he's an exceptional person always very motivated and always very encouraging and I always say, you know, he's he, he does know me. I, I'm from the Bear Peninsula. He's from from Limerick City, but he's been better than any uncle ever has been. You know, so motivating, always ringing. I rang him a couple of weeks ago because we we're he I'm, he gives me a lot of tours that he can't do himself, and he's just exactly like he's on the phone call this morning. He was totally inspirational. Said, enjoy your time. You know, start running, meditating, you know, exercising, doing what you call it, you know, all these positive things. And just one to just quick thing to say, you know, he's he's very inspirational, great guy. And it's a great group. And uh, I, I just want to wish him well. That Thank you. Wayne, thank you so much. Uh, it's because I, I, the business has been going, I have a band, I have a group of drivers. And Wayne happens to be one of those top guys. Uh, that I have handpicked. So anything I cannot do, Wayne and uh, four or five really top class guys, because I know Wayne and these guys can do the standard that I anticipate. And Wayne, and you're one of those. And thank you so much for your kind words. Well, uh, well said, Liam. Well said, Liam. And Wayne, thank you for coming on. It actually spoke beautifully of uh, what we had just spoken about, which is this, this dharma, which is there's no competition. Liam is out there to be of service. And he's out there and willing to help the young Turks like yourself come on and get on in the industry. And uh, we all know the standards that, uh, that Lean Burke holds for himself. And the fact that he's taking you under his wing, uh, you should you know, feel very proud because uh, uh, he, he's one of, one of life's good guys. Folks, um, I think it's been an absolute, I know it's been an absolute pleasure having Lean Burke on uh, Coffee at 11 this morning. Uh, we've all scribbled notes to beat the band. Liam, we're looking forward to watching your journey into the future. Um, Liam, where can people follow you? What uh, social media platform is best for you? Good question. I have uh, uh, the Liam Burke, and when people get onto that, then they get onto Liam Burke's Ireland. From that, they get onto uh, my triple, uh, my, uh, 
my website and my TripAdvisor is the one that really uh, sends me a lot of business because people are talking about me on TripAdvisor on me in Box Ireland. Oh, by the way, before I let you all go, tomorrow morning, Yvonne Dolan, a good friend of mine, is coming on. Yvonne is founder of Blendy Snacks, really interesting uh, and new age business. So looking forward to that. So see you all here tomorrow morning at 11. Liam Burke, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on coffee at 11 this morning. Slauncha. Slauncha. I guess good health. Until we meet again. Bye.